And uh, we live in an era that is increasingly busy, right? All kinds of stuff going on. And we talk about that a lot, and, and I'm busy too. But I'm learning a little bit, hopefully in my older years, later years, to uh, take some time out, just get alone with God. But I think uh, it, the busyness, it, you would think that people would be deeper because we have so much more to do, but this busyness is lived on a very shallow level, just on the very surface. And God calls us deeper. Um, if, you, uh, if you want to have the comfort of belonging to a church so that you can tell other people that you go to church and maybe feel a bit better about things and you want to slip in and slip out and have no involvement whatsoever in the life of the church, you can do that today. And there's plenty, like that church showed there, a little bit bigger than ours. Um, you can slide in, no one even know you're there. But that's unfulfilling. And a lot of people try that and they figure maybe I'll get back to church, but there's no connection, there's no roots. And it really isn't a biblical example of what the church is. Right. Um, I was thinking as an old song came into my mind that the theme of deeper came to me, and I, I do have a scripture passage uh, which I'll, I'll share with you, but there's a hymn in our hymn though. You know those things in front of you, those books? <coughs> um, 322. And at the, at the close of the, of the service today, we're going to sing this, but for now, I want you to notice a couple of things. You notice that in, in hymnals, they, they're, they're categorized. Like you can look through here, death, cross, atonement, person and work, second coming, the word of God, grace and redemption, camp meeting. And this category is aspiration. What's that mean? It means what drives you? What do I aspire to? And I think there's too few people that sit on pews or chairs on Sunday morning that aspire to much when it comes to the depth of their relationship with God. I mean, listen to this, deeper, deeper in the love of Jesus, daily, not weekly, not twice a month, daily, let me go. Higher, higher, in the school of wisdom, more of grace to know. Deeper, deeper, blessed Holy Spirit, take me deeper still. There's always new depths. Till my life is wholly lost in Jesus and His perfect will. Deeper, deeper, though it costs hard trials. Oh, sorry, we're done. It gets tough, I'm out of here. You have, you have, you have disputes. You have things that cost you money. If this following Jesus cost you money or your time, I'm out of here. No. Though it cost hard trials, deeper let me go. Rooted in the holy love of Jesus, let me faithful grow. And then the last one. Deeper, deeper, every day in Jesus, till all conflict passed. What's he talking about? I'm talking about when we see him face to face. Finds me conqueror and in his own image, perfected at last. That's not going to happen until we see him face to face. Deeper yet I pray, and higher every day, and wiser, bless the Lord, in thy precious holy word. It's good to look at these hymns. It's good to, actually more so to look at the writers and look at the authors. Go back and read some church history from the past. And I dare you to find too many contemporaries that that fall in love with Jesus quite like some of these heroes of the faith, the people that paved the way. I was talking to someone just last night about the origins of this congregation in 1939 on South Earl Street, and I've shared with you some things that I found in newspapers. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, I should have muted. Uh, <laughs> about what it was formed, and I, and I can pretty much guarantee you that in 1939, in this area of the country, Pentecostals were probably not looked upon very favorably. People who shouted and jumped and spoke in tongues and believed in healing went to church three, four times a week. They were, they were just a little bit troublesome to the religious crowd. We live in a day and age now where as the Assemblies of God, for example, is the largest Pentecostal denomination in the world. And 
are accepted by other evangelicals, may disagree with some of the finer points of doctrine, but now we're accepted. And I wonder sometimes if we need to get back to being just a little bit unacceptable in the eyes of religious people. I think maybe we could write another verse to that this morning that, that would reflect some of what you see today. Shallower and shallower, the least I have to go through, Jesus, let me be. And sometimes we can expect less and less. Well, you're not going to get people to come out X amount of time, so we ought to just scale it back. Well, they're not, they're not going to be able to, to sit or to be in part of a service for an hour and a half, two hours. We better just scale it back. They, better not, they, we, we, they might not be able to handle hard truths from the Word, so we better just avoid certain subjects. And we wonder why the church, in some cases, is powerless. But there's good news. There's good news. There's a grassroots thing going on, especially with younger people that are letting their roots grow. And they're not letting them grow in, in the religiosity of church life. They're letting their roots grow in Jesus. Amen. This is how we are supposed to live. And I want to look at a passage of Scripture, scripture this morning from Ephesians 3. And we're going to look at verses 16 to 19. I encourage you to have your Bible with you, uh, to open it. If you don't have it with you, why not? Probably have one on here. That works. It's the same thing. <clears throat> Looking at the New Living Translation this morning, it's just one of my favorites. Uh, and I like what it says. This is Paul writing to the church in Ephesus. Ephesians is a, it's just a great book. It has so much wisdom. And uh, if you were looking for a church manual of, of look, keeping the things that matter front and center, Ephesians is a great book for us to look at. Paul is writing, I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep His love is. Would you pray with me? Father God, I thank You for what we have available to us today. We have the Word of God. We have study helps. We have all kinds of ministries. We have churches just filling the landscape of this land. But Lord, most of all, you've given us the freedom, political freedom in this country to gather like this. God, help us, Lord, when we take it for Help us when we put in front of that privilege. God, help us. We just say, well, maybe I'll just back off. Father, I pray today that your Holy Spirit would teach us and show us that we're supposed to live, that the deep rises, this is biblical, is all about. So, Father, I pray that you'll speak to us today in Jesus' name. Walk through that just a little bit because there's, boy, there's a lot. Um, you know, I, I, I like to write, and I'm, I, we can think of just simply money. Uh, we can think of uh, our, our position in society or whatever that. It speaks to abundance, limitless. Upscale side of town where everybody looks on the outside. They look at your physique, at your, uh, your looks, your, your face, your eye. And this would we have if it's supplied from the Do you think he gives, he gives us maybe, well, maybe not as much as the next guy, but eh, there's some. No. 
strength the spirit on the inside it's not just help me get through this day it's power to overcome what may happen in your life I love that in your heart well heart is the the source of everything Uh, cardis it's it's where we get cardio it's not just the organ that your aspirations it's gives us power comprehend right appreciate we might think well I, I understand that explain me the directions of this and that okay now I understand that Clay has been working really hard on a tech and I'll say okay <laughs> help understand this he's good at that understand it this understanding here is the understanding to lay hold of to go after it go after everything no playing games Get your roots down where he Well, I don't understand it, but someday I'm able to understand. But I don't understand because he's given us the power to understand. Possession of of what? The enormity of the love of God. And I know the world that He gave us, but I mean love. That He loves you. Not only does he place spirit on the inside, but he wants to power get a hold of the very of, of walking through life together. The power to overcome the things and complain about, overwhelmed with. There's more, folks. There's always more. No way to fully understand it, right? May you have the power to understand all God's people. Then it goes on. May you understand fully. That's a given. We're not going to understand it fully, but we will someday when we see it. But then the last part of this verse. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. That's now. That's in this life. By and by, when I die. Yes. Whipped us to be filled. I love it. He desires that. We and this is something that we're about this life. This is all believers. This is very difficult. Sometimes it's, it's really probably not best advised. Go ways. That's fine. My dad was, I told you, Unless he got crazy. But he just listened. Go. Mm-hmm. And when he said something, it had. And I. It's not just, though, what we say to other people. It, it's. Well, 
you can read the Word with your disposed mindset of what you That's not listening. That's telling God, yeah, that's right, yeah. Uh, uh, we want and trying to talk over God when he's trying to speak something. Opinion and more word. Ask myself. When there's there's opinion of churches today that don't and I'm and I'm not pick on any. You exactly. He wouldn't want you who you are and who. You do life with and all that's more opinion and less work. Self and more others. Humans are selfish animals. The animal are basic. And left to own desires the flesh to do. I'm not sure. Cannot work their hands dirty working for the gospel. If you're, you're not growing. There is. I've achieved this. Now I can do. You to be. Dream for your own glory, for the glory of God. Amen. Too many people dreaming about their bank and their <laughs> the big or big talkers and yeah. talk. I've mentioned this before. Get around people that they were honest. Our government, for example, you know, it, it's a few years. Can't always predict as well as we think. But if we realize that God is able to do that. Then we can start saying, time, they took this word. I'm going to believe that God can do it. Me and three. To go deep. We can talk, it's kind of talk about prayer. Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. I, that position of our own. Of God. That, that don't expect enough of God that that is heresy. A shape over this. Oh. In fact, that God can But, but a healthy church is what God wants. But when we get in our small little group, us four, no more, that somehow it's not good. It just takes that and, and make a difference. But just because it doesn't mean that it's uh, successful either, right? Many small churches stay that way because they think like 
and, and that's always a growth struggle, right? We've had some of those things here where you've got to change some policies as you grow. You take a church of 20 people and treat it like a church of 100 people. It doesn't work. And sometimes by our own limitations, we limit God as to what he wants to do. Because sometimes somebody told us this is better or that is better. No, people that are in love with Jesus is better. Amen. Whether there's 20 or whether there's 1,000, right? Yes. Yep. Here's something that is a tough thing for us to do, but it really comes out from that passage of Scripture. Learn to invest in intangibles. Mm -hmm. So we did this front entrance beautification project which whatever that cost us, 25000 over a period of two years. And people stepped up and gave, right? We have no debt at this church, no debt. They even paid the electric bill early. I mean, we have no debt. But what I'm saying is I believe that it's time to update that 1978 lobby. So I want to invest some money. Mm -hmm. and, and you come in and you look at it. But when you start moving to access an intangible, that's faith. It takes needs to know what the love of God is. <clears throat> when you move to investing in tangibles, tangibles, that's a that's a whole different level of faith. Invest in the intangibles. What is God going to bring down our pike this year? When you think about the last two years, we have to have God's vision to look ahead so that we're ready. And investing is not just money. Investing is you. It's the volunteer aspect. The, uh, we're very, very slowly growing some staff here. I'll share more of that over here. But ways to multiply the efforts of this church. So investing your time. Invest in yourself when you think, oh, well, I couldn't do anything. But you can. Because if you're a follower and lover of Jesus Christ, God has invested his very best in you. Yes, it takes no faith to invest in things that you can see. I'm going to ask Faye to come. It takes no faith to invest in what you can see. But when you spend time investing in the things that starts with you, starts with me, deeper, deeper, deeper still. Always grateful, never satisfied. Always praising God for what he's brought you from, what he's spared you from, too. Satisfied with that current level. This is... If this sounds like work in the negative sense, you're hearing it wrong. God wants to give you more. God wants to equip you more. God wants to use you in greater ways. And when we have a mind that looks forward to that, when we have a determination and a heart that says, I want to go to the depths of understanding. I want to grab a hold of that understanding. I want to seize it. I want to go after God like I go after my next breath. I, I want to pursue Jesus like I will pursue my own dreams and, and the house that I always wanted and the car that I always wanted and the spouse that I always wanted and whatever else that we pursue with everything we have. When you pursue Jesus more than any of that, he has all this he just wants to dump on you. Yes. Dump on you. And as you grow in Christ and the things that once held such a lure for you just kind of fade away. And you just find yourself saying, I just want Jesus. I just want more. You believe him for the miraculous. You expect God to be God. And you trust in him. And then when you open your physical eyes and look at what's going on around you, you don't let that inform the, the condition of your spirit. Yes, that's right. 
You can look and you can see death and destruction, but that doesn't have to influence your spirit. You could be going through a, a deep valley of, of depression or despair or sickness, but that is, doesn't have to be the reality that you focus on. You look beyond that. You look be, this, is, this is how Jesus lived his life, right? He, he walked and he just simply walked in ministry. And when people came across, he just answered their questions. He, he prayed for them. He raised the dead. He healed the sick. He did uh, uh, miracles of generating food, <laughs> something out of nothing. He was the agent in creation, the living word that God spoke and everything came into existence. It's the only way to live. Have I figured this all out? No. Not at all. I have not figured this all out. But every day I seek to figure it out more. I seek to lay hold of that. That what God has already laid hold of for me. This is the way to live. This is the way to see the miraculous in your life. 